Gardening is not a destination, it's a journey. And right now, you're now embarking on a journey to learn how to garden successfully. And some of the things you need to know is these terms and what they mean, because when you're dealing with gardening, if you know them, then you can use them. If, when you start driving a car or learning to walk or do a bicycle, there's a learning curve on it. And so by teaching you these terms, you can be able to do garden more successfully. So a node is where a leaf will come off of. But it also is where a root will come off of. So you can actually use the nodes for propagation. So if you took, this would have been a hardwood cutting, but you would take it off and you would drop. So a node, you can see right here that there, if, I don't know if you all can see there's a brown bump here, but it goes this way and this bump goes this way and this bump goes this way and this one goes that way. Each of those are on a tree, it's called a leaf bud, but it's a node. And so you can use your nodes to train your tree because I want to have this branch go, I don't know if you can see the lumps on it now, but I want it to go this way. And so I'm going to prune so it will go that way. What the nice thing about when you're pruning is to make sure you prune it right. We have a branch, and it's got this and this. And when you prune, you need to know that right here is where the bud is. And you, when you prune, if you prune, I want it to go that way. If I prune like this, that bud will die. It will dry out. That note. So what you would like to do when you're pruning is you want to prune so that you will prune like that. And generally, you do it towards where it's going to kind of remind yourself. And also you want your um, water to drip off so you're not doing a straight across cut. So also though, Say I decide I'd love to have some geraniums, some scented geraniums, and the temperature is cool so it's not going to dry out. So I have the, the leaves coming off the nodes. And what you do is you take off your leaves below on your nodes, and you get a jar of your rooting hormone. You sprinkle it on a piece of paper over off these where you've cut them off, and you put about maybe two to four underground and only two above, of the leaves are above, so two leaves. All right, and two, four of the nodes. And you put rooting hormone on. Hormone. Onto the powder. And then you make a hole in a pot with the dirt and you drop it gently in so you don't rub off the rooting hormone. And my mother-in-law, put in her whole rose garden by going and saying, I love your rose, could I just have a little clipping of it? And she, it was in the fall, and when it's cooler here, maybe if you're back east, you might like to go and do it when it's cooler in the spring so they don't dry out. But then she made her whole rose garden from it. Grapes, see someone's grape you like? As long as it's in the cool of the time, keeping it wet, you can make grapes. You basically, you can be your own propagation, you can make your own plant. So, knowing your nodes is really important. Also, let me raise that for a minute. You can also do it in the hot weather, but you need, but you need to have a container that's doing a misting unit. And because of that, then it keeps it from drying out. But for the most beginning, basic things, I've done a lot of beautiful herbs. I want to have rosemary or thyme. I take it flat. I am cleaning off the bottom leaves so the nodes are showing. I snip them off and then I put the burning home on and guess what? I now have plants. I have made herb garden plants and it's so much fun because then you're absolutely um, creating your garden. 
So are you saying that like things that are leaf nodes can become root nodes? The node is the same thing? Okay, the question was, can a leaf node become a root node? And the answer is yes. Oh, so cool. Isn't that cool? I mean, it's so exciting the way plants work. Not every plant will do this. Um, lavenders are really big about not doing it when they're blooming. So the only time you can do a lavender when is it when it's not blooming. So you look up a plant and say, do you have any particulars about you that you don't doesn't work? But so because I did a whole three flats of lavender and wound up not one of them came into plants. I'm like, well, this doesn't normally work this way. And then I discovered, my goodness, the lavender needs to be only done when there's not any blooms on it. And I went, so then it works every time. And, and scented geraniums, oh my goodness. You know, you have a rose scented geraniums and it smells so amazing. And then you're taking pieces of that and you're making more of it. So people walk by a sidewalk and they say, what did that smell, the rose? It's like, yes, you know, you, you've made it happen. Also, one of the people I went to, this is not um, UC or any uh, university tested, but they used to put rose scented geraniums under their apple trees. And they kept saying they had no coddling moths, uh, no worms in their apples. They're, and I don't know that it was just maybe they were on the coast and they didn't have coddling moths or that rose scented geraniums. But the smell is confusing, at least she was saying to insects. So something that maybe you will someday test that out and see if it works.